This edition of Mac Voices is sponsored by Smile, the makers of the brand new PDF Pen Scan Plus for iPhone and iPad, as well as PDF Pen, PDF Pen Pro, PDF Pen for iPhone, PDF Pen for iPad, Text Expander, Text Expander Touch, and Disk Label. Find out more about all their great products at smilesoftware.com. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the Talk of the Mac community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, a lot of our friends and neighbors and family are going to be getting iPads and maybe some other tablets for the holidays. So I felt like it was a perfect time to talk to Julio Jose de Zapata about his new book, The Mobile Writer. Uh, it is, well, I'll let Julio tell you about it as to what it is. Julio, it's great to have you back. Thank you for being here. It's been a while, uh, Chuck. Thank you very much. It has. It has. Um, so, first of all, for the folks who may not know you, because it has been a while, you are the technology person at the St. Paul Pioneer Press. Yeah, the, I'm kind of the the tech writer at the at the paper, um, and I, I what I cover, you know, runs the gamut. Uh, but my I personally most fascinated with the consumer consumer technology primarily. Right. But today we were we, we, I'm on the business desk today. We were working on uh, stories about the the Target credit card breach. Which is kind of crazy. So that that had me a little kind of crazy today. Yeah. <laughs> well, I I saw your uh, some of your tweets go out about this book, and I thought it was very interesting. Just because a, it seems like one of the questions that is dogging everybody right now is, okay, I have an iPad. Is it a consumption device? Is it a productivity device? I'd like it to be a productivity device, but how do I go about doing that? Is it really, you know, an insurmountable task? And of course, for this audience, we're going to focus on the iPad. But those same questions come up with some of the other tablet devices. So, well, so where? Did, how did you get into this, and and where did it take you? Well, i i have uh, I have very vivid memories of uh, of attending the original iPad launch, and you'll recall at that time. Uh, Apple unveiled uh, iWork for the iPad. So from from the very get go, the iPad, to a large extent, was being positioned as a productivity device. Even Apple, from the very beginning, uh, sort of pushed that concept, and uh, and it has been uh, a work device, a productivity device. In fact, I wrote a book, iPad uh, Means Business, sort of a business book about how companies are, are kind of using uh, the tablet, you know, putting the tablet to work, essentially. Um, but it it occurred to me to do to take a a different tech and write kind of a how to book. A lot of people want to be productive on their tablets, uh, but they're not really sure how to go about it. There are a lot of decisions to be made. You have to you know what keyboard should you get? Should you get a keyboard? Should you just use the virtual keyboard? A friend of mine actually wrote a whole book on the virtual keyboard, which I think is insane. But people actually do that. Um, uh, what kind of apps there? Are, there are a million like writing apps uh, for the iPad. Which you know, which of the of those many apps do you pick? Um, and so I just th- decided to write a book that just kind of walk people through all their choices on different platforms: iPad, Android, Chromebook, Microsoft Surface. You know, running running the gamut, uh, taking a look at keyboards, taking a look at apps, taking a look at the actual devices, which iPad should you get, which Android tablet should you get. So just walking people through all the hoops so that they have all the information they need in one in one tidy little package for three bucks. And and what and um and uh there's an interesting sort of a backstory. Uh when I when I published iPad means business, I showed it to Guy Kawasaki. And Guy Kawasaki is a really inter- he's a really honest guy, and he said, "You wrote the wrong book, man. This is the wrong book. You should have written a how-to book." And he was like, "It was like, and I, that's exactly what I want to hear just when I'm about to release a book. That's the wrong <laughs> book." Uh, and that, and that, um, you know, that's I, I'm I'm a great admirer of Guy Kawasaki. I've met him on a couple of occasions. I've written about him, and that that stuck in my head. And, it's, and I and I realized I was not. I, w- I was not going to, to be at peace uh, in my soul until I followed Guy Kawasaki's advice and you know wrote that how-to book, and that's that's part of why I did this. So when you went into this, Julio, were you a, a, a an iPad productivity user? Were you an iPad writer? That's the really interesting thing. I'm a journalist, uh, and as a journalist, 
I often plunge into subject areas uh, that I may not know very much about or that I'm not really necessarily comfortable with or I don't agree with. Um, so I, I set out to write a book about how to use uh, an iPad for productivity, knowing full well that I didn't like doing that myself. I'm, I'm happiest when I'm sitting at my iMac with my Microsoft uh, wireless keyboard and such. That's when, when I, when I'm really, really happy. And the whole business of like writing and working on an iPad, it, it, it just, it didn't seem like a really good fit for me. So I wrote the book, not because I was necessarily passionate about the subject myself, but because I was a journalist, I knew it was a valid topic, a topic that needed to be explored in detail and a topic that would help other people. What was really interesting is as I wrote the book, uh, more, uh, you know, gradually I began to buy the concept. I, I, uh, I actually bought my own, bought the premise of the book. And now uh, it's been, it's been a kind of an interesting transformation. Now, if you give me a choice between the MacBook Air that I'm talking to you on right now or uh, the iPad Air with my Logitech Fabric Skin Folio keyboard, I love that thing to death. Um, I, uh, I love working on it. It's my, it's my main driver when I'm mobile, when I'm out working as a journalist or whatever, or just, just about ta- uh, just, uh, just around, just, you know, just going out. To a coffee shop or whatever, I have this little messenger bag. Always tuck the iPad in there uh, uh, because I never know when I'm gonna. I want to get busy on that keyboard, and I love doing that. I, I had no, had very little inclination to do that before I started working on the book, and the book completely sold me on the concept. So I brainwashed myself essentially. Julio, um, I don't, I'm not sure exactly how to ask this, but I guess I'll just pitch it out there. Is is buying a keyboard case or a separate keyboard a compromise on the iPad? And and I guess is, is does it sort of betray the iPad's original design with the virtual keyboard, or is this what is required to really be productive and and get stuff done? That's a very good question. I had and actually actually had a big, vigorous argument with uh, you know good natured but vigorous argument with Adam Engst about that um, on email. Uh, we were like going back and forth, and Adam is like. He's adamant that uh, using an iPad for productivity is just stupid. It, it, it involves too many compromises. You got to use a Mac. And uh, and my response to Adam is, you know, I agree. If I if I had money coming out of my ears, uh, I you know might always opt for the more expensive device over the less expensive one. But, but with the iPad, economics comes into play. If you buy an iPad Air, you're spending roughly half of what you would pay for a laptop. And I'm, uh, I think Andy Anatko says um, uh, he work. He and I work in a uh, rapidly decaying uh, business, you know, collapsing journalism business. We're not, we're not getting rich, and so uh, I have to go, you know, for the economical uh, device. But also, as a journalist, it it recently dawned on me that if I had to go out into the world to do journalism and pick the device that is most appropriate for that and most versatile for that purpose, it dawned on me, a laptop is not it. An iPad is it because I can write on it. I can, it has a camera, uh, it has a front-facing camera. I can take pictures, I can shoot video, I can edit uh, and upload that that video and the pictures. Um, It's basically, it's a better mobile computer for a journalist than a laptop. Uh, there, there are many things I can't do on a laptop that I can't do on the iPad. And so if I'm going to pick the device that's, that's going to best allow me to do my job, every aspect of my job, which for print journalists increasingly means visuals, you know, shooting video, taking pictures. We do a lot of that now. The iPad is that. Um, it's, it's the best all-purpose device for the mobile writer, the mobile journalist, um, I believe um, that's where you get into the that's where you get into the debate. Should you should you add a, a physical keyboard or not? Some people are fine with the virtual keyboard. I can't stand it. Uh, I can't stand you know typing on the screen. So this Logitech thing uh, I bought is you know the iPad Air is very thin and the Logitech does not add a whole lot of weight and volume. So it's amazing that I have this massively uh, powerful computer that just tucks into my little bag. It it 
it blows my mind. We're living in the future. So let me make sure that we touch on this, because otherwise I'll get lots of emails and I have to send them to you. Which keyboard are we talking about? You did say Logitech, and I think you said Fabric Skin. Yeah, Logitech uh, has uh, has a has a couple of folio type cases which wrap completely around, uh, so they they protect the the iPad uh, on, on both sides. They completely wrap it when you're not using it, and then when you want to use it, you just open it and 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 stand uh, the, the tablet up in a little magnet area, and then the keyboard is in front of you. And Logitech has two very similar folio type keyboard cases. One is the fabric skin, and, and they call it fabric skin because the keyboard is hidden beneath a membrane, sort of a, a rubbery, I don't know why it's called fabric, but it's kind of rubbery, a membrane that has little ridges where the keyboard should go. And then it has a very similar uh, folio case called the ultra thin keyboard case, which is almost identical in, in appearance and how it fits onto the iPad, but it has the exposed keys, has these, these little rounded oval keys. So the, they're almost identical. The only difference is the keyboard. And uh, and again, this is where, where assumptions are dangerous. When Logitech sent me the fabric skin, they offered to send it to me. I assumed I was going to hate it. I assumed I was going to loathe it. Um, and, and I say that partly because Microsoft has a uh, touch keyboard that goes with its Surface tablets. It has two keyboards, a mechanical one, which is really nice, and it has a touch-sensitive one where you're, um, um, when you're tapping it, uh, it's electronically registering your taps. And I cannot tell you how much I hate that thing. And my assumption was that the Logitech would be similar. And it turns out that's actually completely not the case. It's a fully mechanical keyboard. It just has that membrane fitting over it. Which is great because I'm I'm the guy who spills the soda on the keyboard, you know, every every year or so, and so this this protects me from myself. And even with the membrane, the I can fly on that thing. It takes a little adjusting, but the it it, it feels great. It feels wide enough. Um, the the sensation of typing on it is great. Um, and so I I love that thing to death. The the exterior of the case is rubbery, easy to clean. Uh, the way uh, that the iPad fits into the folio is great. Logitech has a very unique set of, uh, of rubbery holders along the top of the screen, kind of wedge the tablet into those holders. And those holders are very sturdy. They hold the iPad very firmly, yet gently. And, it, and the, the iPad is very easy to remove from that if you just want to use the tablet. Uh, there are other folio type cases uh, from Belkin, from uh, um, Zag, uh, that have committed what I think is a terrible mistake. The, the, the part of the case that holds the keyboard is a sort of hollowed out plastic kind of a thing, uh, which has two problems. Number one, the, the sections that have the cutouts for the lightning uh, port and so forth. Uh, the cutouts make those portions of the, of the holder very fragile, and, I, and I, I've already broken a couple of them just through standard use. And the other problem is that the tablet is extremely difficult and annoying to remove. So Logitech very ingeniously has, has solved all these problems, uh, holding uh, the tablet in a way that won't break the case. The tablet is easy to remove, and it looks very elegant. Uh, I encourage people to take a look at so the Logitech cases are my favorite right now. And, and then Logitech, Logitech also has the ultra thin cover, which is which just clamps onto the screen size side, and is very popular. The cover is very popular. I don't, I personally don't like it, but uh, people swear by that cover in many cases, and that that is also available. And I'll of course have show notes uh, or the links to the show notes uh, for everything here. Julio, so do I just buy a keyboard and and start? being productive or is there are there are there specific apps that you prefer and i guess more importantly is there a mindset you have to get into that this is the way that you can and should be productive it's um it takes some adjusting because uh it, you have the whole full screen thing on the ipad you're you know it's one app at a time 
uh, the way the apps work is a slightly different. It's it's a uh, it's a it's something that's a little hard to describe, but you know what you're talking about when you're on it. It just feels different. It does not feel very Mac like. It feels like you've uh, you've left Earth and landed on the planet Venus or something. It's just it, it's a powerful computer. It's just a completely different kind of computer. And and after you've spent years or decades developing the muscle memory uh, for using a Mac trying to adapt yourself to this completely different device and remaining productive is stressful. It, it, it's migraine inducing at first. And some people sort of break through that and some people never do. And they just, they just kind of give up. Um, and as I said, I was, so it was not something that I personally wanted to do myself going into the book. And just using all these accessories that I researched during the book, all these apps, just doing that, I adapt it, and now am I, I now buy the con the premise of my own book, which is kind of kind of interesting. So, but the problem with the tell is there are a lot of decisions. You want a keyboard case where where the the tablet and the keyboard and the case are all in one bundle. Do you want a separate keyboard? I mean, there are all all kinds of decisions that you have to make that you don't have to make with a with a laptop. When you buy a laptop, you just buy the laptop. It's all there, the keyboard, the screen. It's, there's, no, there's nothing to think. There's very little to think about. There are a lot more options, decisions, hoops to jump through with the tablet. And it's, it's, it's crazy how much information you have to process just to make the right decisions. That, that's, that's the primary reason I, um, I wrote the book, because I wanted to, to sort of master this concept for myself and then pass that information on to others. This we've been talking about your personal journey in writing this, but you also connected with some pretty high-profile people who have have gone down this route and seem to they seem to have adopted it, and it's now, if not necessarily their preferred method, it is you know one of their one of their most effective methods. Yeah, um, one of my chapters profiles a number of people that they're they're professional writers in some capacity. And they do uh, most or all of their writing on mobile devices. Um, so they, they have traditional computers in all cases, but uh, uh, a, a bulk of their productivity is done on mobile devices. Um, I mentioned my friend who, uh, I might have mentioned my friend who wrote an entire book using uh, the on-screen keyboard, just using his index fingers on the on-screen on keyboard, which I think is insane, but he, he, he did that. He also composes a thousand-word blog post using just his thumbs on the iPhone, which I think is also insane. This is Patrick Rohn. Patrick Rohn is very well known for his minimal Mac uh, blog. And I profiled him because I, I thought his, his case study was very interesting. I actually shot some video. And he's one of my uh, one of the people I profiled. Uh, a couple of other people, Jeff Jarvis, very well known for the This Week in Google uh, podcast. He's a big uh, Chromebook and Android user. Um, he tried to be productive using iPads and, and keyboards and didn't like it, but now he's he's all Chromebook all the time. Um, and you know those those uh, those are a couple of the people I profiled. Yeah, Harry, Harry McCracken was in there too, I think, because I think Harry's a well-known person who. Yeah, Harry Harry uh, Harry McCracken is um, you know uh, in tech journalism there there are very big egos uh, you know people that are very full of themselves and then there are some people that are just they're just really really nice people Harry McCracken is one of those um, I love that guy um, and. Um, I had read a couple of posts by him about how uh, his iPad uh, with the Zag keyboard case became his, his primary driver when he's mobile because he's he's all over the place uh, uh, as a tech journalist he's, he's he's on the road a lot and and he wrote several blog posts about how the iPad is his primary productivity device on the road and so I thought it would, I thought it, it it would be essential to uh, to talk to him about that and to profile him. Um, um, and you know other other people that are not in my book that sort of fit that profile. Andy Anatko uh, is a is another you know very good example. People that you know when they go to the coffee shop, they have to decide which device they're going to throw in their bag. You know more often than not, it's an iPad with a keyboard. And as I said, I thought that was insane 
when I started writing the book, but now it, it's it's what I do. Um, when I'm when I'm going out the door, the device I grab is my iPad with the with the Logitech. Nine times out of ten. And, and you know, we should make a, the, the, this very clear, even even though we've been alluding to it, that this book is not just about the iPad. It's about all the mobile devices. To, you said about Jeff Jarvis using a Chromebook, which I'd like to go down that path for just a second because the Chromebook. Well, let's face it. There's some ads by Microsoft out there about the Chromebook, and I'm not sure they're completely accurate. I'm not a I'm not a Chromebook Chromebook owner or necessarily a fan, but I, it's I think it's really unfair that they're getting that short shrift. It it needs to be evaluated on on its own merits. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm I'm a, I'm sometimes a very conflicted person because I like Apple hardware, but I also like Google services big Google guy. I love to use Google services. And now uh, in recent years, Google has been on a push to take its expertise in, in software and services and, and to, and to put it into devices of its own creation or, or, uh, or design. And the Chromebook is a really fascinating example of that. The Chromebook for people who are not familiar with it. It's a, it's a laptop style device that uses an app operating system that for all intents and purposes is the Chrome browser with some extra functionalities when you open it you're on the web you're using web apps you're essentially using uh, it's it's uh, the operating system on it in fact it's called Chrome OS and a lot of people scoff at that and there are limitations if you're only going to be in a browser you know there are there are certain limitations but it's a brilliant concept because I, I, I took stock, you know, when I heard about Chromebooks um, and started playing with them, I took, took stock of my own computer activity. And on the Mac, you know, gosh, I'm, I'm, in, the, I'm in the browser 75 to 80% of the time. So in that sense, it completely makes sense. The, uh, and Chromebooks are very affordable. They tend to be very low cost with, um, with, with a couple of exceptions. The problem has been the... the uh, uh, hold on a second. Sorry about that. The light automatically went off here in the in the conference room. Um, the problem has been the 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 hardware has been a, a bit underpowered and chintzy, and that's starting to change. You know, the latest crop of, of MacBooks are are quite nice, um, and and they're they're starting to, to get to gain buzz. I, I remember talking with Google when they were just starting to push the Chromebook concept, and they were explaining it to me, and I was like. What are you guys smoking over there? Um, now, um, Chromebooks, they're getting buzzed. I mean, here at, at the Pioneer Press, I don't, without any prompting from me, people are walking up to me and saying, you know, what's, what's this Chromebook thing about? And uh, they're particularly interested in an HP Chromebook 11 uh, laptop, which is it is very similar in appearance to the to the to the long ago um, iBooks from Apple. Looks very similar. Beautiful screen, nice keyboard, low cost. You can charge it with a micro USB cable. A little a little on the pokey side, but you know all things considered, for three hundred bucks, it's a it's a fantastic little machine. This edition of Mac Voices is sponsored by Smile the makers of the brand new PDF Pen Scan Plus for iPhone and iPad, as well as PDF Pen, PDF Pen Pro, PDF Pen for iPhone, PDF Pen for iPad, Text Expander, Text Expander Touch, and Disk Label. Find out more about all their great products at smilesoftware.com. Smile recently added another winner to their stable of world-class products with PDF Pen Scan Plus for iPhone and iPad. I'm on a mission to try to make my life as paperless as possible while not being obsessive about it. At home, that's pretty easy, but out and about, you tend to gather up lots of little pieces of paper that clutter your pocket, get tossed on your dresser at night so it looks like a snowstorm hit, and somehow get discarded irresponsibly in one of those cleanup frenzies that occurs when you get desperate. That's happening far less now that I have PDF Pen Scan Plus. Just take that receipt, slap it down on the table, scan it, and it's in the PDF Pen Scan Plus library. I can OCR it right then and there so the text is searchable, or just leave it as an image. But why would I do that since all the OCR is handled on board and doesn't have to use any bandwidth? 
When done, I can share to all sorts of places like Dropbox, Evernote, Google Drive, email, the list goes on and on. Then I can tuck that annoying little piece of paper somewhere appropriate and dispose of it properly, like through the shredder, safe in the knowledge that I have a copy on my phone or wherever else I put it. And that's just one of the uses for PDF Pen Scan Plus. What are you doing with it to make your life easier? Send an email to chuck at macvoices.com and let me know. PDF Pen Scan Plus from Smile. Just one more program and a line of great software for your Mac, iPhone, and iPad. Thanks to Smile for sponsoring this edition of Mac Voices. So, Julio, I get the impression this book, and I have not read it yet, but the, that the book is part how-to, part case study, part personal journey. Any any other components that I've I are those accurate, and have I missed any? Well, the 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 primary thing to keep in mind is, um, yeah, there have been some books that have been written about you know how to write on an iPad. What do you need to write on an iPad? I wanted to write a book where, uh, you know, where in some cases, the people reading this book didn't even know what kind of device to buy. I mean, they have they have many choices. They have Chromebooks, Android tablets, iPad, Surface. Um, there are so many choices. So I I want to write a book for people that they sort of vaguely know that they want to mo- write a mobile device and they sort of vaguely know they want to be productive on it, but they have no clue how to go about it. They're not a- Apple loyalists who know, you know, coming out of the gate that they're going to go iPad. There are a lot of people that just don't know what to get. Um, and there are so many choices. So I want to write a book for, for those people that basically know nothing and need a full education. So that's why each of my chapters, you know, touches on different platforms um, and um, and there's a little bit of me in it. There are a couple of chapters where I sort of talk about my own experiences, um, but it's primar- primarily uh, a guide. It, it's basically I take people by the hand and sort of wa- it's as if we were walking through a showroom with all the products on the shelf, and I'm going, you know, that one's kind of nice. That one is appropriate for this scenario. That one's appropriate for that scenario. And just just kind of walking people through all the other options, which is uh, then kind of information you can get on the web, but you have to go looking for it. It's scattered all over the place. You know, my book has it in one tidy package. Just for three bucks, you get the complete guide, you know, to all these mobile devices. Do you have any particular favorite apps that you recommend or like that you think are better at, or more well-suited for the iPad? That's a really interesting question. Um um, I have this fascination with the with the um, with the, all of these minimalist writing apps for the iPad, like Byword and and um, and IA Writer and so forth. They all fascinate me. I love how they look. I love how they act. How they behave. Um, but it it's um, um, but as I said, I'm a big user of Google services. I use Google services in my personal life. My employer recently switched over to Google, you know, Gmail, Google Docs. So even though these very these these apps that you know Steve Jobs might have liked to use uh, fascinate me on an intellectual level, on a on a practical level, I have to stick with the Google stuff. And uh, using Google Docs on an iPad used to be a horrific experience. It used to be awful. You have to you had to do it in the browser, and it didn't work very well. And Google has been working on that, and it's a uh, Google Drive app, um, and it's Quick Office app. Both of those apps, are, they're great. They're great now. And so um, not being able to do Google Docs was kind of a deal breaker for me, although intellectually I sort of understood that you can be productive on an iPad. My inability to do that with the Google tools that I need uh, made it essentially impossible for me to use an iPad as a productivity, productivity device. That has completely changed now. Julio, go back for just a second, because you started out by talking about being a journalist and a journalist in the field and the need to to create a different kind of document, a different kind of, I guess, document. I don't know. That, that's probably the best way to say it, uh, where, where you're doing a lot more of all of it as opposed to maybe having a photographer with you, having a videographer with you. How does that fit into the need to to 
be productive on an iPad? And since you're using Google Docs, how easy is it to use some of the assets of the iPad and then go, get those into Google Docs? See, the other thing that was really hard to do on an iPad uh, before was blogging. Uh, just to give you an example, uh, I remember going, I think this was the, the year the iPhone 4 was released. I, I went to that particular product release. And I took an iPad, I, I took a leap of faith and took an iPad as my primary productivity device and nothing else. And it was it was horrible because there were no good blogging apps at that time. So blogging was very painful. I needed to blog uh, and it was very painful. Um, that also has changed fairly dramatically. There are great blogging apps like Blogsy. Uh, I mentioned Byword, which is a, which is a, a minimalist writing app. But Byword very cleverly has hooks into a variety of blogging uh, services, so you can you can literally blog from within Byword. The WordPress app is great. Uh, the Tumblr app is great. So now you have this very uh, interesting choice of blogging apps that makes the uh, the iPad a legitimate blogging tool. Uh, Harry McCracken will tell you the same thing. Because now, if I'm on the road, you know, hypothetically, I could take pictures with the iPad, I could pull the pictures into a blog Z post, I could uh, shoot video with my iPhone, upload it to YouTube, and then embed it on the iPad using blog Z. Uh, I have the ability to create or access you know, still and moving images and, and put them together with my text you know, to, to tell stories uh, as journalists do these days that we don't just use the written word anymore. And... I mentioned before that the iPad, in my opinion, is, is the best overall tool for a journalist to take on the road to do everything a journalist needs to do. And with a, with the blogging part solved, I'm completely sold. If I if I had to hit the road as a journalist uh, on some kind of any kind of a trip and needed to pick one device that w would best allow me to do my job in every possible way, it's it would, it's totally the iPad. Any thoughts, uh, Julio, on Markdown and some of the, the more, I guess, the geekier or at least theoretically geekier tools out there? There are certain things that I keep trying to to, to adopt. Uh, one of them is, you know, task managers. I, I'm terrible at task management. I keep trying task managers. doesn't work. Um, and um, Evernote, there was, there was a time when I just didn't get Evernote and I kept trying to use it. If I click, the Evernote is a, is a really important tool for me now. So there are certain things that I'm aware are very useful to some people. But every time I try to use Markdown, I just, it's like somebody's trying to sell me a different religion or something. I just, I just, I can't, I, I can't wrap my head around it. I don't, I'm not really sure what the fuss is all about. The, that's ironic because in my chapter about uh, writing apps for the iPad, more often than not, the apps have some kind of markdown functionality built into them. So this is very important to some people. I don't get it. At some point, I might get it. It's like uh, text, text Expander, uh, the very popular Text Expander product. Uh, it just something about it just didn't click with me, but uh, it, some, uh, a switch flipped in my brain not long ago. And now I can't live without it. So Markdown possibly might be like that in the future. But I, I, I have no use for it right now. This is very interesting, Leo. I, what I'm hearing from you is sort of a thread that we all should maybe go back and reassess and reevaluate everything because the software has become a little more mature. And, and I don't mean old. I mean mature. It's, it's become more fully functional. I think all of us had this desire to run out and get an iPad and, well, not maybe ditch our Macs, uh, supplement our Macs in some material way. And it, it may be that it just it wasn't time yet. It sounds like maybe now, with some of the people you've interviewed with your personal experience, that it may be time that we can relook at this and maybe with a few adjustments to our thinking and perhaps a supplement to the iPad itself in the form of a keyboard, make it a very viable device. And the iPad is, uh, nobody will disagree that the iPad is a great entertainment device. Um, uh, so if, the, if you get the iPad as an entertainment device, why have the iPad as an entertainment device and a separate mobile device for productivity? Um, hypothet yeah, hypothetically for many people and in actuality for myself, I sort of came to the conclusion that 
I can take this one device. This one device does uh, most of the things I need to do, content consumption, content creation. Uh, most of the stuff I need to do, I can do well on this one device and regard that as my mobile, my primary mobile device. When I'm at home, very much like Harry McCracken, I'll get on my uh, desktop Mac, and that's what I use. It would be, it would border on the absurd for me to use my iPad at home with my big iMac, you know, sitting there on my desk. But when I hit the road, um, I've gotten to the point where my interest in having a mobile Mac has diminished drastically because the, because the iPad just suits my needs better. Uh, it's a smaller package, it's lighter, it's less expensive, uh, and yet it's this incredibly powerful and flexible computer. It's really, it's really quite amazing. Sounds like it's time for everybody to reassess things a little bit, especially if you need to be productive in the field. Because uh, your point, you know, your point, it's an obvious point, but I hadn't really thought about it in exactly those terms, that you've got a video recorder, you've got a still camera, you've got the writing device, you've got a connectivity device, device that's always on. Um, you've just got everything right there in such a small package that, gee, why, why wouldn't you try to push the limits of it a little bit or at least explore some of the new tools that are out there? And the communication aspect is important too because all the social media apps for the iPad are, are very well, are, are very mature and very full featured. Uh, we're talking on Skype. Um, I, um, this morning, for instance, my my uh, my sister who lives in France, you know, pinged me uh, via email and asked me if I was available to chat. And then I said, you know, sure. And so I flipped open my iPad, fired up Skype, you know, hit a button, and we were, we were I was talking with my sister. Uh, I was driving, you know, down the road the other day, and, it, and it's, I suddenly remembered I had an appointment to interview somebody on the phone. So I sort of screeched into a coffee shop, went into the coffee shop, bought a muffin, bought some coffee sat down, flipped open the iPad, you know, plugged in my earbuds, interviewed the person on Skype. Um, it's, it's quite remarkable. And a lot of people make the point that you can do most or all of this stuff on the iPhone. And, you know, that's a really valid point. But the larger screen is kind of a game changer, right? Um, some people, like my friend Patrick Rohn, who, who blogs, does long-form blogging with his thumbs on his iPhone, some people can do that, but it, most people are going to find that too claustrophobic. So it, I think the iPad is the way to go. And uh, I want to make a key point. Um, I think the iPad mini is not the device to get for this. In the past, I would have said, I would have argued, the full size of the iPad is too thick and heavy. It's just too much. Get the mini. And my opinion on that has completely changed. I, I've gotten to the point where my interest in the iPad mini is is virtually nil because the iPad Air is so thin and light, and yet it gives you you know that that extra uh, larger screen real estate that makes you feel comfortable and makes you feel more productive psychologically. It just works better for you. Yeah, there's a lot of psychology I think in this discussion. Holyo, sure. just your mindset going in. Your, again, your comment about you had a preconceived notion about the one Logitech keyboard. Because uh, I, I find myself doing that at times with different products and different pieces of software. It's like, oh, I need to try this because somebody said I should look at it, but I really am not a big fan of it. And then if you give it just a little time, you find out, hey, there are some very valid points here to this, and I should be paying more attention. Yeah, and it's just a matter of a switches flipping in your head. And for some people, it's just not going to work. I mean, some people are just not going to be able to do this. They're not going to want to do this. They're not going to be able to do this, and it's just not its not for them. Uh, but this is just, it's, we've gotten to the point where we have parallel paths. I mean, some people just want a laptop on the road, but other people, like myself, like how the iPad costs less, weighs less, takes up less room, and yet has a, a certain uh, degree of flexibility and versatility that an, a tablet, uh, that a laptop, very fr frankly, does not. And so, it, for me, um, I basically brainwashed myself in the writing of my book, and now I just I couldn't I couldn't couldn't live without the iPad. So, give us the specifics of the book. How much it costs? Where they can go and get it? Is I'm not even sure. Is it hardcover? Or is it strictly electronic? It's uh, Amazon right now. Uh, the iBook uh, version is coming soon, and there's going to be a print uh, version in soft cover. I think uh, right after the New Year, I believe. Right now, it's it's uh, it's Amazon only, but obviously, you can read Amazon books on any Apple device, Android device. So, it's, so you're not you're not inconvenienced in, in any way. 
three dollars uh, uh, at uh, uh, for, for on the Amazon Kindle store, um, and it's it's for you know for three bucks you get all this information for three bucks. It's a steal. It's it's an impulse purchase, um, and yet you're going to get this this book that's going to give you all of this information all this information that could potentially change your life. Yeah, that sounds a bit grandiose, and you know what? I agree with it though, because I I, I think. You just said something about the switch flipping in your head for text expander, and and I agree that's one I couldn't live without. I too am still working on the Evernote switch to to flip it just to have it make sure uh, or make sense for me. But that's part of the, I guess that's part of what we have to do now is you have to evaluate these services and then maybe go back and reevaluate them uh, a, a year or two later because the way you are doing things changes constantly, and the tools change constantly. So you know don't get wedded to the past. Uh, because you'll be left behind. Yeah, I, I like. Uh, I'm I'm very sad in my ways, but I like these these paradigm shifts where suddenly my my perception of how things should be done changes drastically, and then I I, I can't believe how I did it in the past. And it's it's fun to undergo these transformations every so often in your life. It, it's sort of invigorating. Yeah, well said. Well, it's great to see you. I hope uh, everything is going well, and we got to get you back on here more on the Mac Jury to talk about what all's going on in the world and help us make sense of it. I'm happy to do that. Just uh, feel free to call on me whenever you like. Great. Julio, thanks. A happy holidays, and we'll talk to you soon. Likewise. Thanks. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. Go get Julio's book for three bucks. How can you not? And uh, it, I, I'm looking forward to it because I think I want to change my life for the better. <laughs> Until the next time. Thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for links, show notes, to subscribe, to connect with Chuck on Twitter, app.net, Google+, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Subscribe to our weekly newsletter, the Mac Voices Dispatch, to stay up to date with all the latest Mac Voices news from our front page or at macvoices.com slash newsletter. Advertising and sponsorships handled by Backbeat Media at BackbeatMedia.com. Backbeat